um, I wanted to make a video and um, just talk about our journey to the Netherlands. And so to summarize, um, Cameron and I are moving to the Netherlands and um, yeah, I just thought it'd be fun to just document our moving process and just our thought process and also document our life here in North York as it is now. We have about a month-ish left in, um, in Toronto and um, yeah, I, I really just want to remember the time that we had here and have this documentation um, for myself personally and also if you want to watch then go ahead as well. <laughs> um, this is all like very new to me in terms of like making videos and stuff. Um, so bear with me if I'm a little bit awkward. Um, but yeah, I kind of just want to talk about why we're moving, how this came about, and and what the future will look like. So I made some notes. So yeah, just to start off, um, we're moving to the Netherlands and specifically we're moving to a city called Den Haag. It's about 40 minutes south of Amsterdam. And if you know where it's located on the globe, it's, it's along the coast. And so basically, especially where we're living in Den Haag, um, we're very close to the beach, very close to the water, which is really nice. And right across the water is the UK, which is amazing as well. It's, it's a short train ride away, well, short as in maybe three to four hours. Um, but that's amazing because um, at least I'll be able to see my mom's side of the family um, a lot more often than I do now. So um, yeah, that's a little bit about uh, the Netherlands. And so um, I kind of want to start by talking about why this is happening um, and kind of what inspired us to make this move. And so um, this really started um, when Cameron and I got together and I was really personally inspired by his parents and um, what they did after they got married. And pretty much like right after they got married, they went to Japan and they lived there for four years and they didn't really have any money. They didn't have jobs going there and they, uh, they just wanted that experience. And so they decided to move to Japan, which is amazing. And they, they talk about it all the time. And it really seemed like it was one of the highlights of their life and, and their marriage. And so, um, I was really inspired by them to do something similar. And, but before this, um, I was very much like a homebody. My dream was to live in a house next to my parents. Um, I don't know how I could ever afford living in a house, period, in North York slash York region. Um, but that was my dream. I would have never wanted to move outside of the GTA. Like all of those thoughts and moving abroad, like oh, that was all so foreign to me until um, we did get together and my thinking just broadened and um, kind of just led us to this path of potentially exploring um, different jobs to apply to um, and uh, different places that we can move to. And so uh, we initially were thinking, oh, let's move to Japan. That would be the best um, because like we're just, Cameron and I are both very much into Japanese culture and food and we love anime and um, it would have been so cool to uh, to live there and to just experience Japanese culture for several years just like what Cameron's parents did but um, it would have been really challenging especially for me to find an HR related job. If we really really wanted to we could still potentially move to Japan and I could take a job like teaching English or something like that but that is not really conducive to the growth in my career and so um, that would have been a barrier and obviously the language barrier as well and um, like Japanese immigration is, is also very challenging to navigate and so 
predominantly we were really just looking for a country that is English speaking, but also different enough where we could have that different cultural experience. And so we were looking at uh, different countries in Europe that we could potentially move to. And uh, yeah, but all of those thoughts were very, very preliminary um, up until I was actually starting to apply for, for jobs. So um, how did this opportunity actually happen? Um, it was back when um, I was actually looking for a job last April, 2021. And uh, this was right after um, I left my previous company. So it was actually my former manager um, who let me know that a friend of a friend of hers was hiring for this position that was um, that was in the Netherlands and um, and I thought this was a super cool opportunity and I decided to apply and so after the first few stages of interviewing um, for uh, for that role um, I was told that the position closed and at the time, I didn't really bat an eye. I was interested in pursuing other companies at the time as well, and so it didn't really cause too much of a concern. Um, and that's where it led me to my current job, where I am now, where I love. Essentially, yeah, that position closed and I started working at my current job now. And um, several months into my new job, well, the current job that I'm in now, I got an email from that manager who told me that the position had reopened and asked me if I wanted to go into the interview process again, um, basically pick up where I left off. And, um, and again, because this is such a cool opportunity, I, I wanted to continue that conversation. I continued interviewing and uh, to my surprise, I got an offer. I, I don't think I talked about how serendipitous this opportunity was for us and um, I think it's important to talk about, like even in, an insert into the story, because um, because I really just want to emphasize how much God was the one who put all of these pieces together for us. And um, so essentially, my former manager uh, sent me this job description. And if it weren't for her, like I wouldn't have never known about this position. Like I wasn't looking for jobs in the Netherlands. I wasn't looking for jobs for this organization. Just being presented with this one opportunity, this one job that I applied to outside of Canada. And this one job I, I got an offer to. And so it really was just like God putting, yeah, all the pieces together for us and making a way. And um, even at the time when I got an offer, it didn't feel real um, because I knew that there was so much that was contingent on this offer uh, for it to actually be real. Um, like there was, um, I would have to go through a bunch of medical tests, um, including a blood test, an ECG, a urine test, hearing test, eye test, so many things that I had to go through. I'm not, and I'm not exactly sure why, but that was part of the criteria. And I also have to go, had to go through the immigration process, of course, and all the documentation. And all of that, it's grouped under this um, security clearance um, package. And so I had to get the security clearance in or, and the medical clearance in order for, for us to actually, you know, be formally accepted into this role. And, um, and so even though I got that offer um, and I was excited to accept it, I did accept it at the time, um, there was still so much that was going on. Uh, in the background and so uh, it was it was still um, yeah it still didn't seem real um, for a long time and it wasn't until about two months ago where we actually got our security clearance back and at that point we could finally start making our preparations to leave and this is really when it hit me um, that you know we're actually going to be leaving our current home. We're gonna be leaving our family and our friends and our church, and we're gonna be moving to a different country. Like, that's so crazy. Um, and so, yeah, it, it still feels unreal in some ways because a lot of the a lot of our day-to-day -day is still the same. We are now finding a place to live. 
over there we hired um, like a real estate agent to um, help us look for listings over there that might be suitable for us and I'm so glad that like we have him as a resource um, because even like when I'm looking online um, like I, I just see what's in the pictures right like it's hard for me to really go deep into what it might actually be like living there and so when I sent a few listings to our agent that I that I liked and again this was based on just the pictures and the style and stuff um, I thought that they were good listings um, but then he responded to a few of those example listings and he said hey some of these listings are in the red light district I don't think you want to live there and so <laughs> I'm really glad that we have a local who knows the area and who can really help us find a place to live and in terms of um, my my work there I don't think I'll ever talk about where I work um, but in terms of um, the duration um, all staff at this particular organization start off with a three-year contract and this was the perfect amount of time for Cameron and I to really be locals and to um, experience life in Europe and to kind of just be young and have fun. So after the three years there, uh, we're planning on coming back and um, and being adults basically. So we have three years to have fun and just do whatever and then come back and get serious. That is the plan. What else am I supposed to talk about? I also want to talk about the future of my YouTube channel. Um, well, never, well, first of all, I never thought I would make a YouTube channel, like, ever. I have been a long time viewer <laughs> of YouTube videos, but I've never pictured myself, like, posting anything online. Um, I, I do have many cringy videos of my uh, very raw vlogs, like, all the way back in, like, elementary school and through high school and university, um, and those will probably stay hidden forever. But yeah, posting this um, is like a brand new thing for me. And yeah, I just, again, want to just document our, our life as it is now and document our life over there and all our adventures and um, just our transition. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it'll be kind of like a personal video series for myself, but of course, yeah. Hey, YouTube, you can watch it too. Um, and so yeah, I'm planning on just like posting um, videos of my life and our transition and uh, yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy it. So um, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye.